Bear Grylls is known around the world for his extreme wilderness antics and his many Discovery Channel television shows. But you might not know that the famous explorer is also an accomplished author who's got a knack for children's fiction. Anyone who's seen Bear Grylls' television shows may be surprised to learn that he was bullied in grade school. To handle the teasing, young Grylls decided to take up karate along with a few of his friends. While his friends dropped out one by one, he kept with it, and three years later he got his black belt. When the Karate Union of Great Britain went on a trip to Japan, Grills was named its youngest member, revealing in his book Mud, Sweat and Tears, The training was more exacting and demanding than anything I had previously encountered. If our positions or stances weren't pinpoint accurate, we would receive a firm crack from the bamboo Joe Kane. Bear Grills' late father, Sir Michael Grills, was a close ally of controversial British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher and served as a member of Parliament during the 1980s. The ex-military man backed the closing of coal mines and the rollout of a smoking ban in public places, making him an unpopular figure in Northern England. But his colleagues and constituents in the wealthy South considered Sir Grills to be a good man and a loyal politician. That was until the Cash for Question scandal broke. Thatcher's Tory party was ousted in 1997 to make way for Tony Blair's new labor movement. And while Sir Grills had planned for a peaceful retirement from politics, it was soon shattered. A number of Thatcher's MPs were questioned over payments they had received for bringing questions to Parliament on behalf of the wealthy businessman, Mohammed Al-Fayed. This is a good deal for Britain. A good deal. A good deal. A report found that Sir Grills had seriously misled committee members by failing to declare the payments he had received, and that his behavior fell below the standards the House is entitled to expect of its members. After leaving school, Bear Grylls set out on his first Himalayan adventure. He spent a number of months hiking in the mountainous regions of India, with Grills later telling the Hindustan Times, I spent quite some time in India before I joined the army. I went out there climbing, and up in West Bengal and all around Darjeeling. I love India. We were in Calcutta for a while, and then we were with the Indian Army as well. Grills even flirted with the idea of joining the Indian Army himself at the time, but ultimately decided that he would be best served enrolling in the military at home in Great Britain. Grills joined the United Kingdom Special Forces Reserve in 1994 and served with the Special Air Service for three years. His training included everything from desert and winter warfare to evasive driving, climbing, and explosives. During his time with the UKSF, he was deployed to North Africa twice, though his second visit almost cost him his life. While Bear Grylls may have been a SAS Reserve member, it didn't mean he got to skip out on any of the dangerous stuff. Grills' second deployment to Africa ended in a terrible accident that almost claimed his life and, by rights, really should have. The doctor said I'd been within a hair whisker of severing my spinal cord, so I got lucky that day. The adventurer later revealed to The Guardian, In Africa, my parachute ripped at 17,000 feet. I blacked out and on landing broke my back. I spent the next 18 months in braces and plaster. His old school buddy and fellow UKSF soldier Mick Crosthwaite who co-founded Eaton's first mountaineering club with Grills and later joined him on expeditions, also thought that his friends' number was up after that fall. Prostwaite told The Guardian, I look back and think of him in the body brace after that horrific parachute fall, and it's incredible that he survived it. Then to look at what he has achieved since then, I never have thought it possible. Breaking three vertebrae after a 17,000-foot fall would be enough to put most people off extreme heights for good and Bear Grylls was nearly no exception. His parachute blunder made his lifelong goal of climbing Mount Everest almost an unrealistic pipe dream. But after wanting to summit Everest for so long, he just wasn't ready to give up on it. In an interview with The Telegraph, Grylls admits, It had been such a dream for so long since my late father gave me this picture of Everest that I used to keep on my bedroom wall as a kid aged 8. Climbing was where I felt natural and free, and it is what also brought me close to my father. In 1998, less than two years after his near-fatal fall in Africa, Grills not only managed to live out his childhood dream to scale the Earth's highest mountain, he also made history as one of the youngest Brits to reach the mountain summit at age 23. But it certainly was no walk in the park. You know, we had four climbers lose their lives up there, two died of the cold, two fell, and you see the harsh, real side of high-altitude mountaineering. In fact, Grills very nearly met his end for a second time when some loose ice left him hanging on for dear life. He would recount in an interview with The Telegraph. We were in the first stage of the Everest ascent when the ground gave way, leaving me swinging on the end of this rope, clutching at these black and glassy walls. Mick and the two Nepalese climbers saved my life, gradually pulling me out. Unfortunately, 
While Grills was able to reach the Everest summit, his old friend and climbing partner, Mick Crosthway, wasn't able to accompany him all the way to the top. Despite his best efforts, all Crosthwaite came away with was an equally harrowing near-death story. With Grills feeling under the weather near the end of the climb, Crosthwaite decided to seize his chance and make a shot for the summit alone. In a cruel twist of fate, his equipment cost him his prize with the end in sight. Grills told the Guardian, he had a problem with his tank and collapsed in the snow. I was ill back at base and he radioed me and said, Bear, I think I've got 10 minutes to live. I'd never heard him speak like that. I screamed at him, keep your eyes open, then the radio went dead. Members of the team were able to recover Mick before it was too late, but Grills had to complete the remainder of the trek alone. As if two close shaves weren't enough, Bear Grills' behavior in the years since his Everest descent has been no less hazardous to his health. He had a near miss while filming a 2010 episode of Man vs. Wild in the Canadian Rockies when a cameraman failed to stop on a descent. The cameraman's wooden sledge slammed into Grills' leg at roughly 45 miles per hour and sent him toppling down the mountainside. While Grills managed to luck out with a severe hematoma on his thigh, the cameraman broke his nose along with the camera case he had been holding. I remember the impact and I remember screaming and I remember my first emotion was, if that had hit my head, I'd be dead. He would also sever his finger on razor-sharp bamboo in the Vietnamese jungle, survive a rock fall in Yukon, a boulder fall in Costa Rica, and a mine shaft collapse in Montana. He also came close to meeting his maker when he tackled a saltwater crocodile in Australia and came face to face with a 16-foot tiger shark while stranded on a makeshift raft in the Pacific Ocean. In 2005, Grills and a fellow explorer, Lt. Com. Alan Veal, broke the record for the world's highest altitude dinner party. They flew a hot air balloon to a height of 24,262 feet and climbed down to a dinner table suspended some 40 feet below. While braving the harsh wind chill and temperatures of minus 50 degrees Celsius, the pair enjoyed a three-course meal. Reportedly pulling out all the stops and dining on asparagus tips, duck a l'orange, and fruit terrine. After the Daredevil duo dedicated the venture to the United Kingdom's Queen Elizabeth, they skydived back down to ground with full bellies. The bizarre get-together was the brainchild of fellow British explorer David Hempelman Adams, who had crossed the Atlantic in a hot air balloon just two years prior, and he called it the strangest record he had ever attempted. According to an article published in The Guardian, Hempelman Adams added, It was a fun stunt, but was at the same time very dangerous. There were potentially a lot of things that could have gone wrong. Bear Grylls was the subject of controversy in 2008 when U.S. survival consultant Mark Weiner started talking to the British media about his time working on the Discovery Channel series Man vs. Wild, claiming that the star was a fraud. Weiner revealed that during the Desert Island episode, he personally assembled a Polynesian-style bamboo raft off-camera, only for Grylls to add the finishing touches and take the credit. And it's almost as if every weave that I'm doing uh, is another step closer. Uh, to home. After filming concluded, Weiner claims that Grills left for a motel, since the episode was actually filmed in Hawaii, rather than an actual desert island. And this reportedly wasn't the only time the show faked Grills' whereabouts. According to Weiner, Grills spent a few nights in a luxurious lodge, complete with a TV, hot tub, and internet access during the filming of the Sierra Nevada Mountains episode of the show. In response, Grills would explain to the BBC, If people felt misled on how the first series was represented, I'm really sorry for that. I'm the person that takes the rap for these things, even though I'm not always involved in the editing side of it, but ultimately, it is me on screen. One person that was less than convinced by Bear Grylls' explanation of his luxury hotel controversy was fellow outdoorsman Ray Mears. Mears responded to the allegations by dubbing Grylls a showman and a boy scout. While both of these monikers are factually accurate, with Grills being the current chief scout, a largely nominal position that oversees the Scout Association's youth programs, Mears wasn't being polite. Mears told The Independent, I think the viewer knows that if you want to really know how to take care of yourself in the wild, I'm the person to talk to. And his claim may not be hyperbole, since Mears' public reputation is so well respected that the police actually hired him to track a cop killer at large in the UK in 2010. The rivalry between two of Britain's best-known survivalists flared up like a nasty nettle rash in 2013, when Mears accused Grills of putting the lives of his viewers at risk with his Rambo-style approach to taking on the wild. Mears claimed in an interview promoting his autobiography, My Outdoor Life, some of the things Grills does are crazy. Leaping off cliffs into water when you don't know what's in it? If a 15-year-old was to copy him and impale himself on a pram leaping into a canal because they were inspired by it, I would think that was his fault. 
Despite his constant globetrotting, Bear Grylls is a religious man at home with what he describes as a lovely, quiet faith that he shares with his family. And we dress it up in churches and all of this, but actually that's the heart of it. In an interview with The Telegraph, Grylls said of his approach to Christianity, if the point is to find community and be encouraged, then I find the best church often happens with my kids. I'll get out the old piano and sing a few simple kids songs and a little hymn. We'll say a little prayer for each other and we're done in seven minutes. It's wonderful. In 2016, he became the latest celebrity to talk about his time with the Alpha Course, an evangelistic program founded in Britain that utilizes discussions to explore the basic tenets of Christianity. He agreed to publicly document his experiences with the program over the course of a whole year. When not staying on the houseboat, Grills and his family have moored on the banks of London's River Thames. The Grills family lives on a remote island off the coast of Wales. The location allows Grills to live the lifestyle he promotes in his television shows, even though he doesn't have total control of the land. In 2013, he found himself in hot water with the local council after erecting a huge metal slide that dropped off a cliff into the seawater below. Grills told The Telegraph, The slide is not for the paying public. It's for me and the kids and friends to use when we are there. It has an element of danger to it. You do hit the water pretty hard. But do you know what? There are a lot more dangerous things around. Grills elicited further criticism in 2015 when he enlisted the help of the Royal National Lifeboat Institution to rescue his eldest son Jesse, 11 years old at the time, after Grills had purposefully stranded him on a rocky outcrop off the island. Grills' 2012 best-selling autobiography, Mud, Sweat and Tears, was voted the most influential book in China when it was published, and it seemed that it was only a matter of time before he attempted to crack the Chinese market with his brand of rough and tumble television. He did so in 2015 with the show called Survivor Games, which boasted a similar premise to Grills' UK series, Mission Survive, where audiences watched Grills take eight celebrities on a two-week hike through unforgiving terrain. Remember what I said, I'm not looking for the fittest or the strongest. I'm looking for the person with determination, heart. Many viewers complained that the show was tasteless and disgusting after Grills asked the contestants to drink their own urine. But Grills' success in China continued in 2017, after he invited several more Chinese celebrities to join him in the wild. These celebrities would include former NBA star Yao Ming and Robin Lee, one of China's richest tech moguls. The follow-up program aired under the title Absolute Wild China. Bear Grylls suffered a setback in 2016 when ITV decided not to renew Mission Survive for a third season, though the channel later released a statement assuring fans that they had a number of projects with Bear in the pipeline. At the time, both the British and American versions of The Island with Bear Grylls, a reality series placing participants on uninhabited islands in the Pacific Ocean to test their survival skills, were still running, as was Grylls' UK kids show, Survival School. But after Grills had teamed up with then-sitting United States President Barack Obama for a special episode of his series Running Wild with Bear Grylls, he was keen to lead another presidential adventure in the wild. When Grills was asked by Radio Times if he would be interested in taking the recently elected Donald Trump on a similar trek, he seemed to issue a challenge saying, It would be amazing, of course. And there's no doubting he's tenacious. But I don't know, Donald Trump is a person who likes to be king, and the one thing I've learned in the wild is you're never the king. You've got to learn to put the crown down. Of course, as of this video, former President Trump has yet to reply. Whether this potentially classic bit of television happens or not, it is safe to say that Grills isn't going to be leaving our screens anytime soon. With the eighth season of Running Wild with Bear Grills having finished airing in August 2023, it seems that his years of experience have taught him how to survive in show business just as well as he can in the wild. Although he is best known for his survival TV series, Bear Grylls has also written and published many books. Most casual fans are aware of his memoirs and survival guides, but he's also written a spiritual survival guide for kids. In You vs. the World, the Bear Grylls guide to never giving up, Grylls shares lessons gleaned from his adventures, which we reportedly hopes will provide children a toolkit to help them face life's challenges. Keep reading, because uh, reading is how we gain knowledge, skills, and inspiration. But on top of this, Grills also writes fiction. He published the Mission Survival book series between 2008 and 2015, as well as releasing four novels in the Beck Ranger Adventure spinoff series in 2016. In 2014, Grills signed a million pound deal with Orion Publishing Group for a series of spy novels about an ex SAS adventurer, with Grills telling The Guardian this series of novels will combine the best of Bond, Bourne, and Indiana Jones in one gripping series of books. 
The first book in the series, Ghost Flight, was published in 2015, followed by Burning Angels in 2016 and The Hunt in 2018. Grills has also written children's fiction with the 12 books in the Bear Grylls Adventure series coming out between 2017 and 2019. Grills returned to nonfiction in 2019 with Soul Fuel, a daily devotional, sharing how his spiritual faith has contributed to his accomplishments and helped him through tough times. In 2022, Grills published the award-winning Mind Fuel, Simple Ways to Build Mental Resilience Every Day, sharing how he prioritizes his mental health. Bear Grylls has made philanthropy a priority and has used his expeditions to raise money for charity. His 2003 Arctic expedition, which he wrote about in the book Facing the Frozen Ocean, raised funds for the Prince's Trust, a United Kingdom-based charity dedicated to supporting at-risk youths and young adults. In 2005, Grills led the first team to paraglide over the jungle plateau of Angel Falls, Venezuela, raising funds for the charity Hope and Homes for Children. Since 2006, Grills has worked as an ambassador for the Global Angels Foundation, claiming in a statement, Global Angels is one of the most effective ways of reaching the world's most needy children. They were the beneficiary of my epic Everest attempt in 2007, where we raised $1 million to provide safe water, food, and education for vulnerable children in Africa. But not all of his charity work is for the benefit of children. Grills has also raised money for endangered wildlife, showing his support for the Tusk Rhino Trail Project by making several videos encouraging people to aid their conservation efforts against rhinoceros poachers in Africa. They do such an important and incredible job protecting wildlife and the communities that surround it. Grills has also donated money to Polar Bears International, writing in a statement, Stabilizing our climate is one of the most important challenges humanity faces. I want to make sure that my children and their children will have the opportunity to see wild polar bears for themselves, and not through the pages of history books. Grills also organizes the Bear Grills Survival Race, a multi-distance series of obstacle races and survival challenges that raises money for charity. Bear Grills was a vocal opponent of the Brexit referendum in 2016 and publicly announced his intention to vote to remain in the European Union. Grills spoke in support of the Remain campaign on social media, taking to Instagram to share his feelings about Brexit with his followers a few days before the United Kingdom voted on the proposal. Grills wrote, At such a time for the UK to retreat, run and cut ourselves loose from Europe, when there are so many challenges on our doorstep, to me just doesn't feel either courageous or kind. In his Instagram statement, Grills acknowledged that Europe had flaws, but history has shown that bringing communities together allows everyone to achieve greater things. He added, I guess I believe that to help make the future of the world a better place, then that future has to be about partnership. This is why I want us to stay together and remain in Europe. Despite efforts of numerous public figures to convince the UK to remain in the EU, Brexit was passed, and the UK departed the Union following the election of Boris Johnson as the United Kingdom's Prime Minister. Grills partnered with Merlin Entertainments in 2018 to open Bear Grylls Adventure in Birmingham, England. The experience gives families a place to step outside of their comfort zone, while also providing visitation packages for schools and groups. And I think if you can do that in a way that's safe and is fun and, and is empowering, uh, it's amazing. And Mark Bell, a business development director for the Merlin Magic Making Division, claimed to Blue Loop, Bear is very much about championing the adventure lifestyle, experiencing something new, pushing the boundaries, stepping out of your comfort zone. Bear Grylls Adventure caters to thrill seekers who want to rock climb, utilize its rope course, and experience its skydiving simulator. Visitors can also snorkel and dive with sharks, participate in escape rooms and an intensive obstacle course, and practice their archery and axe throwing at the Target Academy. Bell added in his statement to Blue Loop, he was involved in the conceptual design of the attraction. It's a timed activity where guests pit themselves against all the different challenges on the assault course. Merlin Attractions is reportedly interested in expanding the Bear Grylls adventure by bringing it to other locations around the world, with Grylls telling Blue Loop, The BGA Park is all about empowering people through experiencing some amazing adventures in a safe, fun environment. My hope is that people leave the park feeling that little bit braver, a little more ambitious, and that, in turn, they go on to do other fun adventures. Bear Grylls contracted COVID-19 early in the pandemic, telling The Guardian, I was like, wow, this is really wiping me out. I've been going a month and I'm still rubbish. Despite his illness and challenges with the pandemic lockdowns, Grills was able to return to work adding, it was miraculous that we were able to finish. We were filming in the hottest red zone of Northern Italy. We had a very small team there. Everything was shut down and we got into the mountains and did it. Returning to work was a welcome distraction for Grills, although he recognized everyone wasn't so lucky. 
Royals expressed his hope that the world would become more unified after experiencing the pandemic, hoping that it would encourage others to hold tight to their friends and loved ones to get through difficult times. Grills claimed, That's the key lesson from this time. You've got to adapt, use ingenuity, and know that the storm won't last forever. Following the COVID-19 pandemic, Grills began promoting his new organization, Becoming X, a learning and development company. He told CNBC that he believes it has never been a more difficult time to be a young person. Grills hopes Becoming X will teach young people what it takes to succeed by sharing the stories of iconic individuals in arts, entertainment, sports, politics, and business. In 2023, the documentary Warzone, Bear Grills Meets President Zelensky was released. The film follows Grills as he travels with the film crew to Ukraine to interview President Zelensky. We got to see a really beautifully honest side of him, I think a side never seen before. During the brief interview between Grills and the embattled leader, the two men walked the war-torn streets of Kyiv. Although the interview was characterized as chemistry-free by The Guardian, Grills also interviewed Ukrainian locals in Kyiv, who bravely went about their daily lives while grieving their lost loved ones. Grills was interviewed on The Project, an Australian current affairs talk show about meeting Zelensky and filming in an active war zone. He claimed, It's a country at war, and you really feel it. I mean, from the minute you go across that border, you, you know you're really aware of it. The curfews, blackouts, and soldiers everywhere, it's under martial law. When asked if he had second thoughts about filming in an active war zone, Grills said, Yeah, definitely. I was definitely apprehensive. You know, it's been a while since I was a soldier. It was slightly harder to find crew for this journey, you know, but most of the guys stepped up, and it felt like the right thing to do. While the documentary was filmed in a week, the people with whom Grills met and interviewed in Kyiv are still, as of this video, fighting against the Russian military invasion and for Ukrainian independence.